Hey guys, welcome back to another one. Uh, the video that you're about to see is a, uh, a video that's been requested to me a couple of times. Um, John Howell, buddy, this one's for you. Uh, sorry it took me a couple days to get it done, but we got it. Um, and if anybody out there, if you guys don't have John Howell's channel, get it. And he's an awesome guy, great channel. And uh, we appreciate everything you do, buddy. Um, so, as for the video... I am going to be showing you a whole bunch of different turkey calls. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Okay, um, like I said in the intro, I've had a few requests about this stuff. So so here it is. I'm going to try to do this in one take because I've been trying for three days now to make it. And we've had storms and snow and it's been ridiculous. So like I said in the intro, I'm going to go over a couple of different types of calls. And... Uh, and we'll just go from there. So the first I'm going to cover is slate calls. So there's a couple of different, well, there's more than a couple of different types, but you've got your glass ones and this one's aluminum, but they basically all operate the same. Um, you have, I call it tuning them. You have to prep the surface so that when you use your striker, um, in this case, it's wood, but they come in graphite and all kinds of different stuff. So, but when you uh, use the striker on the call, that needs to be roughed up. Uh, 180 grit sandpaper works good. Um, those kind of like Brillo pads work okay, especially for these, these metal ones. But anyway, the way you use it is just running the striker either in small circles or straight lines um, on the surface of the call. So uh, earphone warning, but so if you do small circles, you'll get that yelp. And then straight lines, you'll get the purrs. Okay, so you get the idea. Uh, the glass slate calls or pot calls, whatever, whatever you want to call them. Pretty much. They just give you different tones and raspiness. Okay, so that's the first style that I wanted to talk about. Second style is these push button type calls. Now they've got spots on there so that you can put a string through it. Let's see if I can get that. There you go. And then they've usually got grooves on it so that you can attach it to your leg or your gun or whatever. And these ones are really simple to operate. Um, really good for a beginner um, because you really just push the plunger. There's really not much to them and they have okay sound. Enough to do the job. Okay, so that's a plunger type. Another one, box call. These things can do a couple of different things. Now you might notice I have elastic and paper. The reason I put the paper in there is for when it's in my pocket of my vest or if I'm just throwing it in a pocket of a of a of my coat, um, when you're walking, it doesn't make any noise because it can't make contact with the surface of the of the wood. So there's a little tip for you: you put a little piece of paper through there, wrap an elastic around it. When you're walking around trying to sneak in, especially if you're doing running and gunning, it doesn't go crack 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 and make noises on you when you're trying to sneak in. So. These things are great uh, for long distance calls. And the way they operate is so that you've got a sound chamber, paddle on the top, and those edges create the friction. And you really just run the, call, the paddle across the top of the chamber. So 
straight in the call. And of course, the harder you go, <laughs> sorry about your ears, guys, the louder it is. It's great. It's a great call for first thing in the morning if you've got a really, really windy day um, or you're driving around running and gunning and you want to try to locate a bird. Really great call for that. <laughs> They'll pump out a lot of sound um, and carry cut through that wind. So, and then the other kind of cool thing about it is, and I'll see if I can get this to work properly, but you wrap that elastic back around there. And if you shake this call, oops, sorry, wrong end. This one doesn't sound as good, but you have to play with that tension a little bit sometimes. Um, but you can actually use it as a gobble call. Um, this one, not so much. <laughs> I think on this design, the paddle is just a little bit too deep, but it will work on some of them. So if you've got one of these, give it a try when you're at home because it can double as a gobble call. Um, so that one made a little bit of a liar out of me, but it's okay. It will work. So the next one I want to show you is... I just brought this one out because it's kind of just a cool thing to me. This is a homemade wooden pot call. It was made for me. Uh, a gentleman I used to work with, his son made it and gave it to his dad to give to me. And uh, he called it the squawk box. And he made it out of maple. And But it, this one operates the same way as the pot calls or slate calls. You just, circles or straight lines. Okay, I just, I wanted to show you that one because you do it yourself, guys. You can make these styles of calls at home, right? Same as the box call. So I wanted to show you that. And then of course, I wanted to do this in one take and I forgot to bring a call with me. So I'm gonna go get that and then I'll be right back. Okay, <laughs> you guys watch my videos. My longtime viewers know I usually forget something. So the next one I wanna run through is the diaphragm call. Um, basically, it goes in your mouth and you'll notice that there's kind of two sides and you want to put the side that has the little bump up in the roof of your mouth. These are tricky to get to get onto, but once you get it, by far as far as I'm concerned, in most situations, not all, but these are my go-to calls. I'll, I'll start off first thing in the morning with like a slate call or a pot call. Just uh, soft tree yelps and, um, and, and clucks. And then once I know a bird is coming in, I always switch to this because you don't make any movement. The, you're as still as you can possibly be. And that's essential for hunting turkeys because their eyesight is incredible. Um, so these are probably by far the most popular call. I know a lot of guys like the pot calls and so do I. Um, but for not having to, to move at all, these are the way to go. So um, there's a couple things with these calls though. When you first get them, you might have to, you'll see, you'll see that there's that inner ring and then there's the material kind of an outer ring there. You may have to trim that down a little bit to fit your palate because most guys, most men and women, um, the first time you put one of these in your face, you're going to gag. <laughs> okay. It's just the way it is. So, but you can trim that material down just a little bit and go just a little bit at a time because you can take too much off. So, um, just be, be careful with it but you can trim that material down on the edge there to make it fit your palate better so you don't feel that 
that urge to throw up. Um, and just take your time with it. It takes practice, but once you get onto it, you're gonna like it. So basically you put it in, it goes on the root, you use your tongue to push it up onto the roof of your mouth. And then you're just forcing the air across it um, using your tongue to keep pressure on the bottom of the call. And like it's it's a little bit difficult to explain, but when you try to do it, when you first start, you'll figure it out. Um, the the biggest thing that people mistake people make is trying to blow too hard. You don't need to to it's not a goose call. You don't need to pour your guts into it. Just sharp short breaths and you're going to force the air between the top of your tongue and the bottom of the call okay so when you get good with these things and it does take practice so what i used to do is on my way to work on my way home from work if i was out driving to go scouting putting the garbage out Fire one of these things in. And practice the different calls, okay? Just keep practicing. Don't give up on it. You'll get it. And after the first couple times of wanting to barf, <laughs> you get used to it, and it's not so bad. Um, and like... Uh, here in Ontario, you used to have to take a, t a hunter, a turkey hunter safety course. Uh, they don't do it anymore, but we had to when I first started. Um, so the instructor there said, buy two, because there's a good chance you might swallow it. And you'll have to wait a couple of days to get it back so you can use it again, right? <laughs> but anyway, that's the diaphragm call. I'm trying not to take forever with this video, guys. So the next call, those calls all emulate a hen, um, a hen call, trying to draw the tom to you. This next one is a Jake call, okay? And you really just, the, there's no real trick to it. And this one's gonna make a liar out of me again. I right, just used it. What's going on? Did I grab the wrong one? Huh. Lovely. Anyway, I don't know if it, I've got a couple of them and the diaphragm let go in one and I probably grabbed the wrong one. All you do anyway is grab it by the bottom. This is weighted at the top. You shake it and it sounds like a, a jake. Um, I don't know why this one isn't working unless, like I said, I grabbed the wrong one. All right. Anyway, that's your jake call. The big thing you want to be very careful about these is now you're... Uh, pretending to be a, a Tom. And especially if you're not on private property, if you're on public land, you want to be careful with this because now you're sounding like a Tom. And unfortunately, accidents happen every year. So be aware, if you're going to start mimicking a Tom, you want to make sure that you're in an area where there's not someone sneaking up on you. So just a little food for thought there guys the last type of call i'm going to go over is called a locator call uh, this one i believe is a crow call there's a bunch of different there's owl you know there's hawk there's crow there's a bunch of different types but basically what you're trying to do is as the name implies locate a tom so if you're out hunting in the afternoon um, or running and gunning you're trying to elicit a sh what we call a shock gobble. Um, I've actually had it happen first thing in the morning. I had put the birds to bed and I was going in. And when I went to close the door on the truck, it slipped out of my hand and it slammed. And that bang of that door closed, a gobbler gobbled. So, and that's kind of the same thing you're doing here. So is you're just trying to get a gobble so you can locate where that bird is and then make a plan to move in on him. So, but you want to do these fairly loud. And um, so headphone warning, but 
basically you're just trying to sound like a, a crow or a raven or a hawk, whatever the call is, an owl. And you do it loud and sharp like that. And sometimes that gobble will do a shock gobble. And um, I'm not 100% sure why they do it. If it's kind of a warning or it's just out of shock. But they'll they'll just do a quick gobble. But it's enough that you'll see or you'll, excuse me, you'll be able to hear where they are and then make a plan to move in on them. So thanks for uh, sticking around. Uh, sorry that Jake call didn't work. I don't know why. Like I said, I must have grabbed the wrong one. But anyway, um, it is what it is. Those are the turkey calls that I have in my arsenal. Um, and those are the ones that I'll use most often. Uh, I don't use the Jake call a lot, uh, but I have on occasion. But definitely, if you're a first-time turkey hunter, you're going to want, in my opinion, you're going to want to look into a slate or a pot call and a diaphragm call. Have those two calls. Um, if you're going to only buy one call and you're not sure you're going to keep turkey hunting, uh, I know you will, but if you're not sure that you're going to enjoy it or whatever, buy a box call. Uh, just be aware of your movement because these ones, you can purr, you can cut, you can, you can cluck, you can do all that stuff on this one call. And it's very simple to use. Um, the one thing you do, like I said, you have to remember, or at least I do, is put that paper in there for when you're traveling and carry a little bit of chalk with you because you have to put chalk on the edges here. I'll show you that real quick. You'll see here, right along here, you'll have to chalk that up once in a while. And if it's raining, keep it covered. These ones don't lend themselves well to the rain. So anyway, those are the different turkey calls. Uh, I'm sure I've missed one or I'm sure I've, I've uh, left one out. But that's the basic turkey calls. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a little something. And remember, it's never a bad day to be more outdoors.